part of ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Inside T-Mobile Arena, the second of our doubleheader tonight. Game number one belonged to Utah State from start to finish, a 17-point dismantling of St. Mary's. Mississippi State, Arizona State coming up in just moments. They were confident right from the opening tip. Nemias Keita, the freshman, had 24. Sam Merrill from the backcourt attacked with 23. Yeah, these two played beautifully off of each other. A star was born down low, and Keita did it offensively inside, even showed the mid-range game off. Defensively had a massive impact as well. This team brought energy from the moment they stepped on the floor. The Aggies, their aggressive style of play, and that effort propelled them to this win. A couple of names you do know in this game. Ben Howland, the fourth year head coach at Mississippi State, has what looks to be his best team yet. And on the other side for the 3-0 Arizona State Sun Devils, Bobby Hurley in year number four as well. He's going buttoned up today. Everybody else, polo shirt, pullover. He's come for a business trip. Mike, I can guarantee it's <laughs> not gonna look like that by the time these 40 minutes are over. Two very like-minded teams, similar personnel, similar ideals and philosophies. Who will get the best of whom? Regardless, we're in for a great one. Some good energy in this building here tonight, just past dinner time in Las Vegas, as Arizona State, a perfect 3-0. And, oh. and they've got one of the best freshmen in this incoming class would have been top 25 didn't play his final year of high school in the united states coming out of canada and has taken college basketball by storm yeah mike you established the names we do know in the coaches but this is a name you need to get to know the 6'4 freshman guard big strong likes to play downhill wildly athletic volume shooter and score and then you've got the brothers weatherspoon on the other side quindary the 6'4 senior guard leads the way he provides the offense where Nick Weatherspoon, you haven't seen a motor like his defensively. He will be challenged as he takes on the assignment versus Dort. We're glad to have Nick Weatherspoon, the younger of the two brothers, back on the floor after he injured his ankle against Long Beach State in the first half, just about 20 seconds in, and watch the rest of the game from the bench. So Mississippi State in the road maroon and Arizona State in the home whites as Romello White, the redshirt sophomore, and Abdul Adu, also a redshirt sophomore, tip it up and the ball belongs to Lamar Peters and the Bulldogs, number 15 team in the country. Quindary Weatherspoon for three, offensive board, grabbed by Eric Holman, it's a jump ball and it's going the other way to ASU. A lot of long athletes out here this evening, Mike. So when that ball goes off and it careens off the rim, it's an all-out battle to win those 50-50 basketballs. Cheatham gives it up for Dort, their leading scorer, 22 points a game. Martin drops it off on the bounce. And the fadeaway try drops in for Kamani Lawrence. Talk about that length at 6'7", the sophomore. 10 minutes per game last year, a massive role for this team this season. And he's provided early on, attacking the rim where he's at his best. Martin's got his eyes up, thought he had the speed advantage and said the step back is also good against Holman. Arizona State in hot pursuit of early offense. They're trying to score that ball immediately, not waiting to work that shot clock down, really trying to apply pressure on this Bulldogs defense. Mississippi State with wins against Austin P, Hartford, Long Beach State. And you've got a cylinder foul. Called against Kamani Lawrence, the sophomore from Providence, Rhode Island. When well, your name is Remy Martin, you got to be able to score that basketball. An advantage here, make the 6'10 defender dance, creates space, gathers himself shoulder square, and the payoff. Now, Kobe White of North Carolina has gotten a lot of attention for his hair, but let's throw Martin's name into the mix as well for one of the best hairstyles in college basketball. Peters. How about that agility to get to the rim? Peters, low center of gravity at six feet tall. I believe he might be shorter than that. 
but the lucky lefty, explosive with that first dribble for Colin Lima. There's Dort, the guard, built like a linebacker. To my job, Glass, Cheatham gets it from the right side. The transfer from San Diego State. Again, it's going to be those 50-50 basketballs, Mike. When they come off, who can control them? Who can possess them? Second chance, it's going to be a storyline to see. Heather Spoon gets a lot of contact. Offensive board for a dude. Nick Weatherspoon from inside the arc. Former number 36 player in the ESPN 100 a couple of years ago in the class of 2017. Oxygen. The Sun Devils by two. Outnumbered as they come back down the floor, led by Martin, the Pac-12 Sixth Man of the Year last season. One dribble and a travel. Romello White turns it over. You talk about a quick first step, low center of gravity, explosion right here. Peters walls the defense to sleep, finds that driving lane. And if you're not in low position defensively to guard, a guy like Peters can make you pay. He's a high level athlete. Don't worry about his height. Size don't matter, Mississippi State. They jumped two spots in the AP poll coming out earlier today, going from number 17 to number 15. Team last year that was 25 and 12 and made it to the semifinals of the NIT. Beautiful help side defense there from Arizona State, taking away driving lanes despite being challenged. White got in front and in transition, Sun Devils coughed it up and Dort gets called for his first foul. The freshman from Montreal scored 53 points over the first two games, third most by a Pac 12 freshman in that type of time span since the 96-97 season. Had a chance to talk to Coach Howland about that young man right there, Lugans Dort. And uh, Coach Howland, Coach Howland, excuse me, has coached a lot of guys. And he said he reminded him of Drew Holiday, one of his old UCLA products. He said what Dort can do with the basketball is magical. Short. Holman. Right spot, right time. Ties it at six. Good movement from Arizona State. Perpetual movement, challenging that defense to guard and keep with them. Too high over Lawrence's head and out of bounds. Fast paced start, the officials letting them play. Top 25 caliber matchup in Las Vegas. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. Mike Cousins, former Notre Dame forward Jordan Cornette, glad to have you along. Utah State winner in game one. Nemeas Keita and Sam Merrill combined for 47 points in their victory against St. Mary's. Last year, a 30-game winner, so an impressive one for Utah State, which last year was a 500 team. So the winner of that game gets not only a rest tonight, an off day tomorrow, and comes back for the winner of this one Wednesday night. Yeah, a lot of people looked at this matchup that we're watching right now and said, this feels like a championship game. But I'm here to tell you, having watched Utah State, seeing the coming out party from the big fella Kata, that team can match up with either of these teams very nicely. So that's gonna be a competitive game, and with how the Aggies look and the energy they brought, it could be any man's game. From way outside for Peters, that was a few feet beyond where the NBA arc would be, and it was with 11 seconds on the shot clock, not the best look. Dort goes strong to the basket, Cheatham chases it down, didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock continues to dwindle to 10. Martin's combo. High level high school player, teammate of Marvin Bagley at one point. He lets it fly, and it's a shot clock violation against the Sun Devils. Pair of empty possessions right there. 
Both teams trying to figure it out offensively. Impressive win earlier today from Auburn. One of the top preseason picks in the SEC. They match up with Duke tomorrow. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Arizona with a three-point win over Iowa State. And Gonzaga taking on Illinois. 11.30 Eastern over on ESPN2. Part of the toughest part about this tournament, not only the great field, but also if you continue to win, it's three games in three days. You don't see that, as Coach K pointed out earlier this week, at any other point during the season. Gives you an opportunity to do the work early on. You can't lose a season, you can't win a season this early, but you can gain a whole heck of a lot. Alan Cheatham there, his first for the redshirt senior for Arizona State, which plays now for the third straight game without Rob Edwards, their third leading scorer. Transfer from Cleveland State, who's been battling an injured back and didn't travel with the team on this trip as he tries to rehab them. Cheatham with a high arcing shot came down short and into the hands of Holman. Mississippi State doing the job defensively. Take away driving lanes. Make them beat you from the outside. Quindary Witherspoon for three. In rhythm. The three-point line has not been good to these Bulldogs out of the gates. They've been settling offensively for the long ball. In rhythm, the defense not settled, not waiting for it to congeal. You get the three-point look. Bulldogs have scored nine straight. Weatherspoon locked up Dort. He kicks to the corner at the other end. The drive nearly yielded a pair for Tyson Carter. Cheatham sees the open lane. Gotta love this kind of basketball. Back in my playing days, I was salivating when I recognized the officials are gonna let him play. That's what you've seen here in these first seven minutes. Peters wants three. And you might ask, well, who does that benefit if they're letting him play? Neither team, both incredibly physical. No advantage to be had there. You're just gonna watch some exciting physical basketball. And Mike, I know you lack this, but Mississippi State finding some rhythm. That's right, rhythm with the three ball. Quindary Weatherspoon, catch, shoot. Defense cannot give him that type of breathing room. It's a flat out star. That's why I'm often asked to stay off the dance floor at weddings and other social events. No rhythm. <laughs> you gotta know your limitations. They call it staying in 10 and two. Snap the fingers, bop the head a little bit. Make it seem like you don't know Wait for the dessert table to come around. <laughs> Dort's still looking to get going. He's 0 for 3. They're throwing healthy double teams at him, trying to run him off as a handler. Looking to make other people be scorers. Howland wanted to travel. He didn't get it. As Lake got in trouble underneath the basket, the foul goes against Quindary Weatherspoon, the Bulldogs' leading scorer at 21 points a game. Perry got greedy defensively right there. The 6'10 freshman from Mississippi State was in great defensive position down low, tried to cheat to get the steal. Created the advantage for the quad Lake. Martin so far has looked much more to be a distributor than he has a score. Dort wants his first points. Got him. Weatherspoon did all he could with the deep contest. Cream rise to the top, tough shot from Dort. Here comes Dort with a full head of steam. Locking foul, he goes to the line for a couple. Now you gotta be bold to step in his way. Not how it's drawn up right here. As they're moving, shuffling, scrambling to get a shot, but enough of an exchange. That defense on its heels. You cannot play beyond behind the arc on a guy like Dort with his range in the gym range and his capabilities. You gotta be deep on it. 
He bounced around to a couple different high schools throughout his career. Arlington Country Day in Jacksonville, Florida. Conrad Academy in Orlando and then finished up at Athlete Institute in Ontario. No matter where he's gone though, he has always had this extremely muscular physique. Yeah, and that's what sets him apart from a lot of guards on the perimeter is that physicality. And that's what's been really embraced with this freshman class in college basketball. Look no further than Zion Williamson at Duke. He stands out because of the physicality. That's what Agent Zero for Arizona State brings in Dort, a physicality that allows him to attack the rim, but also the finesse and skill set to beat you from what, with the long ball. ESPN's National Recruiting Director, Paul Biancardi, said even though Dort wasn't a high school senior in the United States, so he couldn't be ranked within the ESPN 100, limited only to the 50 states, he would have been a top 25 player had he stayed in the U.S. to finish off high school. And again, that's where Weatherspoon defensively loses, and they're going to give the foul to Nick Weatherspoon. That's what the delay was to find out who was on. Nick Weatherspoon has to meet the dribbler. Once you give the dribbler momentum going to the rim, especially a six foot four physical guard like Dort, you've lost the battle. Offensive board for Lake. That's your point guard mixing it up in there amongst the trees with the rebound. Sun Devils dominating the offensive glass. They've now got three offensive boards on this possession. This is where fatigue sets in defensively. You've got a guard. Get a stop. Guard some more. Advantage offense. Dort with a nice drop off for Lake. Slams it home. So 11 all. Winner here gets a chance to play Wednesday. Winner of a big golf match this week, it's nine million. One of the participants, Phil Mickelson, joins us next. Well, Booth just got a lot more exciting. Phil Mickelson now joins us here in Las Vegas in town for his big one-on-one -on -one matchup against Tiger Woods later this week. Former national champion at Arizona State. So you come into town, your first stop, or at least one of them, is the perfect place to see the Sun Devils play hoops. I love it. I love watching basketball. I love what Coach Hurley has done with our program. We've struggled for a number of years, and he's, he's brought a lot of excitement and energy to this program. Had a great year last year, almost uh, playing our way into the tournament, and it's been exciting to see the development. As you're busy with your own golf career, how much do you get to keep up with, whether it's Herm Edwards in football and now Coach Hurley in the basketball team? I, I do the best I can and to make some games. It's usually my off season towards November, December, where I could watch a, a couple of the late games in the season for football and start watching a few basketball games. It's fun for me to stay connected with the with the program, and I, I enjoy being part of the Sun Devil. I mean, once, you, once you go to Arizona State, you're a Sun Devil for life, and it's fun for me to support them. Well, Phil, we know you're not just in Vegas to hang out over this holiday. You got something pretty important coming at the bottom of the week. Can you tell us a little bit about this matchup with Tiger that's going to be epic? I, I do believe it's going to be epic. I think it's going to show a glimpse into watching sports, sports watching, that we will start to see in the future. And with only two guys, you can do some of that stuff. So, for instance, on the screen, we'll have live up to the second odds that you can get on your MGM account and, and uh, make live wagers. That'll be part of it in the match. We'll have uh, some challenges amongst us, and you'll see some smack talk that you don't normally see in golf. Yeah, Phil, something tells me there's going to be a lot of smack talk between you and Tiger. There's been some on Twitter already with you guys going back and forth. I think this is going to be a lot of it. It is, it is fun, and the thing about it now is that both Tiger and I know that it's all in good fun and yeah. good spirit, and so it's not, it's not meant to be in your face it's meant to be fun banter and he's he's been very good at it he's very subtle in his in his digs and what's your approach i'm passive aggressive as well <laughs> and so uh it's subtle yeah. bigger question phil what's your what's your hoops game like you know you're a lefty you got that lefty stroke can you hit the long ball uh, my, my hoops game is non-existent. I, it's the whole running thing that bothered me. You know, <laughs> if we want to play a horse, I'm okay. But, yeah, that running up and down the court, I, I struggle with that. So as you and Tiger have been rivals for so long, how did this match of one-on-one -on -one come to be? It came about, really, when I won for the first time in five years in Mexico City earlier this year, and Tiger, the following week, was in contention. And all of a sudden, uh, there was this talk about bringing us together and 
uh, CAA a ma a management group uh, did a great job in bringing both sides together to make this happen. It's uh, something we should have done years ago, and I'm glad that we're, we're uh, doing it while we're playing well. We're just early into the college basketball season. The Sun Devils are 3 and 0. Who are have you seen any other teams? You know, Duke has gotten off to a great start that, that have impressed you so far. So I, I'm a big Coach Shashevsky fan. He came and spoke to uh, the Ryder Cup team before we went over. I just think uh, he's the he's just kind of the epitome of class and, and what uh, college basketball is all about. So I pull for them, even though I don't have an affinity with Duke. I pull for them because of him. And they look like this could be a season that they go undefeated. That's a very, that's a, a bold claim right now. Hey. You know, it, it doesn't happen very often, but this is uh, one of those standout years that it, it very well could. Zion Williamson has had that kind of influence on you. You think he can lead this team? Well, I just think the the discipline and as well as that coupled with the talent. I think when you when you have talent but you're not disciplined or well coached, you're going to have inconsistent nights, you're gonna lose, but they look like they play at their own level as opposed to playing to their competition. And when that happens, uh, there's only a few games that they're gonna be challenged. You sound, coach, yeah, you, you sound like perhaps you've taken uh, some, uh, some keys from Coach K. So you're here Monday night. What does the rest of the week look like for you leading up to the event later this week? Uh, so tomorrow's a chaotic day for us. We'll have uh, we'll have practice session that do a dry run with production. And, uh, so we'll play four or five holes with a uh, full-on production. Drones, we're going to have drones from all over. And we'll do some uh, other interviews, press conference, whatnot. Wednesday will be a day where we just work on our game, make sure we're sharp. Same with Thursday on Thanksgiving, and then Friday's the match. Phil, pump your Instagram before you go. Hey, you just got Instagram, right? I just started a few days ago, about a week ago. Uh, my Instagram game is, is not tight at all yet, but I'm working on it. It's it's uh, it's actually been pretty fun to, to start. I started Twitter a couple months ago, and uh, that's been a fun challenge, too. It's been a, it's an entirely positive medium, Twitter. Everything, everyone is so nice on there, I'm sure as you can. <laughs> I, I actually don't mind it. I think that when you get to a situation where is it bad to openly root during the while we're talking? Is that a bad bad thing? It's bad for us. It's okay. okay for it's okay you. for me. Yes. Um, I, I when you get to a certain position. Um, oh right, that was a nice shot there. Where you are, you, you get used to people uh, talking about you as though you're an entity or, or as opposed to a person. Like when we watch football. Uh, and I pull for the charges, and I say, oh, come on, Rivers. I don't mean that personally. I mean that kind of like in, in, in general. And you start to take things non-personal when that happens. So I understand that I'm more of an object to be discussed rather than, you know, my feelings. So if people want to knock me on Twitter or whatever, I, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. So uh, I've kind of passed that point about 10, 12 years ago where I just don't care. That's a great perspective. Well, we appreciate you joining us. I know... Coach Hurley and the Sun Devils appreciate having you here. And uh, if folks want to hear more about your match on Friday, you'll be on with Scott Van Pelt tonight, correct? <laughs> That's right. We're going to uh, hook up after Monday Night Football. Fantastic. Thanks so much for the time. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Yeah, good luck appreciate on Friday. It. Thank you. A national champion and a team champion as well during his time at Arizona State. Pretty cool. You know, we're in Vegas. We're watching hoops. We're talking to an absolute legend and icon. Oh, no, man. I might just... Take the rest of the night off. He was coaching hoops. He was making predictions, bold ones, albeit about Duke. He was cheering on his, his Sun Devils as we went. I think we ran the gamut there with Phil. Weren't you also making the undefeated prediction earlier today? I didn't want to say it. It was about Phil. <laughs> but he got the co-signature here for me. Absolutely. Here comes Dort on the breakaway. Off to the short corner. Taken away from Cheetah. Out of bounds stays here, 8.20 to go. Number 15, Mississippi State, a perfect 3-0. Wins against Austin P. Hartford and Long Beach State. And Arizona State, 3-0 as well, with wins in overtime against Cal State, Fullerton, McNeese State, and Long Beach State. And they were scheduled to have a game on Friday to go play the Dons of San Francisco, but due to air quality concerns there in the area, that game ended up getting canceled. Cherry works from the wing. Gives it up and a rising Cheetah is taken down with a whistle, but he'll go to the line for two. And it, the more this game progresses, the more you see. You talk about in football, winning the line of scrimmage. In this game, it's gonna be winning the paint. Who can protect that rim? 
who can defend and keep the offense pushed out more, who can grab rebounds, eliminate second chance opportunities. It's a battle of attrition down low. Cheatham, the native of Phoenix. So this is a homecoming for him to dress for the Sun Devils. Transfer from San Diego State. And in the 16-17 season, so two years ago, Arizona State not only played at San Diego State, but beat the Aztecs. And as Bobby Hurley tells the story, Cheatham saw the style of play that he had brought to the Sun Devils and said, that's something I want to be a part of. So he sat out last year as he transferred after averaging nine and six in his final year there for Steve Fisher. And now as an integral part as a starter for a so far undefeated Arizona State squad. And he's one of the old guys on a very young team, so he's one of the voices that they look to during turbulent times. Nice finish, the freshman Robert Woodard, native of Columbus, Mississippi, and 46th ranked player in this year's incoming freshman class. That's a guy like Dort, wow, who gets to the rim. Both those guys are built like football players. Mike, how about that? Goes up with a powerful offering. Dusts himself off, tries again, and goes back for the rebound. Impressive athlete. One point lead for Mississippi State. Our thanks to Phil Mickelson for joining us. A bold prediction, undefeated Duke. Leather coat two here in Vegas, filled by 100 strokes versus Tiger. Are you kidding me? Let's get to know Mississippi State freshman Robert Woodard. Or should we say, <laughs> Dr. Dre. I mean, it is a striking resemblance. That's a <laughs> doppelganger for sure. They forgot about Dre, but no, we haven't here at ESPN. I want some of that Beats money, Mr. Woodard. <laughs> His dad played at Mississippi State from 87 to 90, and Woodard comes in highly ranked number 46 in the ESPN 100, a seven foot one wingspan. Okay, well, if you're gonna mention Dr. Dre, another star for this team, a swing forward at 6'10". That's Snoop Dogg and Eric Holman. If we're going to go that way, I mean, let's go all the way that way. <laughs> Buddies are going to get a kick out of that one watching at home. Eric, Calvin, Broadus, Holman. <laughs> Dropping government names. All right, Mike. You got street cred with me. One of the famous uh, Snoop Dogg on ESPN moments, actually, happened here in Las Vegas back in 2014 when his son was playing at Bishop Gorman High School, and he was in the booth with our colleague Jason Benetti. He's out experiencing next level broadcasting in Maui with Bill Walton. <laughs> How about the open floor, Arizona State, in pursuit of that early offense? When you got athletes at 6'7", who can put it on the deck, extend, and like all great finishers, if you key in on the eyes of Lawrence, despite the contact, keeps his eye on the goal, allows him to finish. That is the beauty, and that is also the secret formula of great finishers. Abdul Adu, the redshirt sophomore forward, tests his ankle as he gets back up. 24 there in Maroon. Ooh. Oh, I hate seeing that. Same type of play, in essence, with an ankle twist that kept Nick Weatherspoon out of the game against Long Beach State for all but 20 seconds, but he's back today after sitting out a chunk of their practice yesterday here at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Number zero coming back onto the floor, the sophomore from Canton, Mississippi. And with Abdullah Doe, you, you hope that it looked worse than it actually is. You never want to see anybody get hurt out here on the court, but you're also going to need his size at 6'11". Talk about winning this thing in the paint, you're gonna need that body. Holman had the right idea for a cutting Reggie Perry under the basket. And a turnover. The Advocare Invitational starts Thursday. Villanova will look to snap its first two game losing streak in five years. A Memphis squad, which come Thursday could have very good news for it. LSU, impressive in year number two under Will Wade. Cherry for three. Claims just the front iron. Yeah, 
defensively. You've got the drive from Gwendary Weatherspoon. Bodies protecting the rim. Extreme length and athleticism with Arizona State. Nothing easy at the rim for either team. And we talked about the potential good news for Memphis. They're one of the finalists, five schools, for the number one player in this year's senior class, James Wiseman, who's going to make his college decision tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN. How about that shot? The bank is open here late night in Vegas. Dort gets one off the backboard, but maybe that can get him going in this one. Little zone show almost here with a Pierce from Arizona State. Moving into that 2-3. You talk about length, it can erase a lot of mistakes. Talk about impressive wingspans. A lot of those above seven feet, a few just a notch below. That erases so many mistakes. You can gamble on the perimeter defensively, take risks. Because if you allow for that blow by, you've got erasers at the rim that are going to challenge everything. So it allows your defense to be simply a more aggressive. What kind of a shot blocker were you? All-time leader at Notre Dame. How'd you do it? I was on assuming because it looks like we got something <laughs> going over here. There's a head fake and a lean in. He was seeking the contact, the shooter. So you call Weatherspoon saying you're seeking that contact. That's an offensive foul. Appreciate the clarification. So the third foul on Weatherspoon who takes a seat on the reverse lay-in. Kamani Lawrence has got it. We've got a timeout. 26-17 and 10 unanswered by Arizona State. Howland not happy with the foul and not happy with the result on the scoreboard at the moment either. All right, here's the kick out for three. I think Nick Weatherspoon's been watching a lot of NBA, a former Arizona State grad and James Harden. Used to do that a lot, made famous for it, except he'd get that call. Weatherspoon does not. They're going to flag him for an offensive foul. We love the effort. It ain't the hard execution. So he earns himself a seat next to George Brooks, the fourth-year assistant on the bench with three fouls. And likely won't see him for the remaining five minutes and change of the first half. You see this extended out 2 3 zone from Arizona State. You see, the State must do exactly that. Peters aggressively driving into gaps. That's where you collapse that defense. Coach Ben Howland was all over his guys during practice last night saying, You cannot allow driving lanes. You gotta hedge everything, push them out, make them shooters, not drivers. Arizona State getting everything, going downhill, attacking the rim. Again, that 2 3 zone, gotta establish Perry. Holman in the mid post. That's where the defense is most vulnerable. Oh, with the left hand, nicely done by the 6 10 senior. And with the length and the skill set of these bigs for the Bulldogs, when you see that 2 3 zone, Perry. Holman, they should be licking their chops, knowing that they can operate that mid post and just dissect this thing tactically. Defense, 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 defense. Three no good for Lawrence. White with a fresh 30. Cheetah got it. Cheatham's capable of knocking down that three-point shot. You give it to him like that. Makes it a high percentage. Rate. Thirty-one, nineteen. Your score. Mississippi State scratching their heads. Easy to smile when the alma mater's got the lead. And especially when the guys on the floor know where you're sitting after they hit a shot. Yeah, Mike, easy to step up your game. Zyla Cheatham, only one of four from three on a season. Hits that one and says, Phil, come on, man, let's go. I got you beating Tiger. I love it, Lefty. Thanks for coming out. We're going to put on for you. <laughs>
Cheatham averaging 13 and 10 over the first three games for Arizona State. They've had a bit of a layoff because of the game that got canceled against San Francisco on Friday. They practiced before they got here yesterday, came out on the floor. Won't say they looked lethargic, but it wasn't a high energy walkthrough, understandable given that they'd already practiced earlier in the day. But the difference in energy between what the Sun Devils did yesterday and the Bulldogs was night and day, and yet it's Arizona State with the advantage. Yeah, I, I love that Coach Hurley got his guys moving on the floor today. It gets you in that game mentality the day of the game. That's important. That's why they've come out ready to go. Carter called for the reach in. The junior perhaps had a case there. Thought he had his hand on the ball. The officials disagree, so that's his first. And it sends White to the line. Seven for ten at the stripe this year after going only 55% a year ago. Here comes Woodard for Carter. You, you bring in Woodard for Carter. Woodard more physical. You hope that can help do the job on the backboard, a place where Arizona State has started to really establish themselves. One for two on that trip for White. ASU has scored 16 of the game's last 18 points. Wooder with strength cuts into that advantage. It all starts with the drive of Weatherspoon. Wooder playing off and cutting simultaneously for the catch and finish, but it's the attention. Weatherspoon commanded and demanded on the dribble drive to allow for the easy two. Dort threw a couple defenders, swatted away by Adu. Back on the floor after getting his ankle tended to. Here's why this when you talk about commanding that defensive attention on the drive right here. Okay, charge. You got one, two, three, even a fourth looking. Somebody's got to be open. Dump off, easy finish. All with the dribble drive, aggressively attacking, whether it be a man defense or a zone defense, showing from Arizona State. Martin went up looking like he was going to shoot and instead dished it away. Nice pass. Beautiful outlet. Martin, perhaps the fastest player on the floor. His dash is a two-handed dunk for Cheeto. He's wearing the headband like a halo after that. Weatherspoon off balance and off front iron. This has been a remarkable start for Arizona State. Lawrence pours in the three, closing in on 40 points. You wouldn't guess this is a team that lost its top three scorers and 57% of its points from last year. Tra transition, getting out and running, now switching defenses to really confuse the Bulldogs. Coach Hurley started to make a habit out of establishing his team and their presence in the non-con. What a showing here early on. How about Remy Martin, the speed and transition right here like a blur. And then brain freeze him with the hesitation slurpee. The dump off and the dunk finish. That is beautiful execution in the open floor. Zyla Cheatham, a next level athlete with a two hand dunk finish. Cheatham goes up, he's got the headband on. He goes from Sun Devil to Sun Angel as it suddenly becomes a halo <laughs> over his head. It's a fashion statement. Maybe that's how you start wearing it. Maybe you just keep it like that right. for the duration when things are going like this. Yeah. 
Wow. Is he talking to Phil some more? He's really having fun with Phil Mickelson. Or maybe it's not a ref. Hey, look, my headband's messed up. I that didn't move this myself. Foul, foul, please. Final minute of the first half that has been all Arizona State. They've much more looked to part of top 25 team than has number 15 Mississippi State, which jumped two places today in the poll. Blake with a cardinal sin down low. Catch, go up. You put that thing on the floor, you're immediately vulnerable. Peters behind the back, gets past Martin, kicks to the corner, Keyshawn Fiesel. No good on the three. Chance for one shot if the Sun Devils want. They say no, we want to score. Bulldogs don't have numbers, they hold for one. Peters thinking the contact will get him a whistle, it doesn't. And it's a 15-point game at the break. All Arizona State. Nothing but exasperation for the Bulldogs. Bobby Hurley, shirt and tie. It's a business trip here in Las Vegas. And Cornette, Mike Cousins, our entire crew, we're glad to have you back here inside T-Mobile Arena. Arizona State led by freshman Lugan Stewart putting on a show of physicality and shooting in the first half. Showing his skill set in every facet. Can shoot it, put it on the deck, distribute, flat out playmaker. But he's so athletic and yet physical. Goes up, misses, goes back and gets it amongst the trees. And then one more time for good measure. Yeah, he's good. He's also lucky. Off the glass for three. He's been playing at a high level like that for quite some time. Highest rated recruit at Arizona State since James Harden, the high school class of 2007. And coming out of Canada, played with some high major teammates during the summer, whether it was guys like O'Shea Brissett at Syracuse, Iggy Bredstakis at Michigan, Marcus Carr, who unfortunately can't play this year, transfer at Minnesota. NCAA didn't grant his waiver, but had he been playing high school basketball as a senior in the U.S., would have been a top 25 player. Mississippi State inside Eric Holman, the senior and preseason second team All-SEC, tries to get them back going. And that is where they can get back into this game, establishing a low post presence. Arizona State's throwing a lot of defenses out there, a man-to-man, -man, a zone. Can they pick, get back to scoring on the inside? The reliance on that three-point shot did them no favors in the first half. Two of 15 from distance. Here's a fun matchup between Martin and Peters. One in white and two in maroon. Two of the quicker guys on the floor. A dude tweaked his ankle in the first half. Was quickly back to action. His rebound sets the stage here as he holds from 15 feet. Holman could shoot the three. Got it. Last year, he shot 44% from three, and all of a sudden, this game's back to 10. Eighteners over St. Mary's earlier tonight, so they get the winner of this one Wednesday night, 11 Eastern, here on ESPNU. All of a sudden, a 15-point game has been slimmed to a 10-point game. No question, there was some motivation given in whatever form it came from Ben Howland at halftime. But Coach Howland's only coached very physical, very tough teams. A set drawn up out of the timeout from Arizona State can't convert. Coach Howland seems to have always been tough. They gotta come out here and meet the toughness of Arizona State. A foul there. Very hard foul there. We hope everybody's okay. The collision between Cheatham and Holman. And Holman. Yeah, the head fake gets Cheatham up, but Cheatham. 
grabs at Holman, but it was almost like he was trying to bring him down to protect him. The interpretation of this will be interesting from the officials. Will they go look at it? Doesn't look like they will. I think that's the right decision. The right decision to keep it, keep it moving. Here. It looked like Holman had his nose on the way down. That's the type of pain that reverberates and just makes you angry. Yeah, yeah Cheatham wasn't taking the... Now the foul is, is, is a flagrant one because of the prevention of the basket and how hard the foul was. But there's nothing that's a cause for a flagrant two and a disqualification. That was off the table. Sure, the standard for flagrant one is either excessive or unnecessary contact, and you can certainly see how that plays into the equation there. Yeah, absolutely. In a head fake, Holman got him in the air. Cheatham was just trying to protect both bodies after that from injury. But going back to Coach Ben Holland, Howland, he wants his guys to be physical. They were out physical in that first half. So he wants them to come back out, establish themselves, scoring on the inside, get back in transition, and compete on the backboard. Three things that were missing. They missed Weatherspoon for about the last five and a half minutes. Number zero, the younger Weatherspoon, Nick, because he had picked up his third foul, so they're happy to have him, a 10-point a night contributor, back onto the floor. His older brother, Quindary, kicks to the corner, and it turns into three for Lamar Peters. Driving kick, driving kick. Going back to Nick Weatherspoon being out, Dork really benefited during that stretch, not having the defender on him. It's been both brothers, Weatherspoon, guarding him. Now you move the cue since Nick's in foul trouble. Cheatham started beyond his range and got walled up by Adu and Holman. Peters. Good transition defense from the Sun Devils who have yielded 10 unanswered points in the first two minutes of the half. Martin has the first bucket for ASU in the second. Remy Martin is so fun to watch in the open floor. He really sets tempo and pace for his team, whether it's getting all the way down to finishing or just in pursuit of early offense. Great defense. Great defense. Stayed there patiently, Cheatham, the whole time. Didn't fight on any head fakes from the taller in the 6'10 Holman. Patiently awaited and created the turnover. Look, makes him meet the chest. Meet the chest, meet the chest. Pushed off, no advantage, no advantage. Hands up, turnover. Textbook, fundamentally sound defense to give his team an opportunity. Now, if the refs really wanted to be ticky-tack, they the could hands. have called him for the foul when he brought two hands down because that should automatically be a foul every time. But it's a credit to the officials for seeing what type of a game is developing and letting a few things slide now and then. Kamani Lawrence with the three-pointer. He's got 15 in a game high. Weatherspoon with the answer. Holman. Turned away. Dort leads the Sun Devils break. Three-pointer, good for Dort. The transition game once again for the Sun Devils and the lack of commitment to get up and guard, playing on their heels. Dort makes a pay with the three-piece nugget. Dort sold that one. Weatherspoon with the illegal screen. Coming across around the lane, the paint area. Another opportunity for Arizona State to build. The fire and gusto we are used to from Bobby Hurley on the sideline. Right now, the transition game is what separated Arizona State in the first half. And it's what's been able for them to sustain the run for Mississippi State and respond. Cheatham wants the high-low. Didn't have it, not great position for Daquan Lake on the baseline. Cheatham's played a lot of basketball. He's a redshirt senior for this team. He needs to identify there's nothing there. Don't go for the home run. Take the pitch, wait for the next best one. Move the ball, continue to run offense. Ben Howland, Mississippi State's head coach, says simply when you're winning, it's a lot more fun, and this is the best team he's had in Starkville in four years. So he's having a lot of fun. 
with the way this season has started. Nick Weatherspoon, the offensive board, finds his brother Quindary from the corner. Adu with a third try. Weatherspoon cashes it in. Ten point game again. Bulldogs competing on the backboard, giving themselves second chance opportunities, something they were devoid of in the first half. Dort got a little bit of space. Not a great shooting night for him. He's just 3 of 11. I believe that's a little bit of settling, too, Mike. He's been able to get what he wants, attack mode. Just get away from it. Number 15, Mississippi State, not going away. Three-point line be given to give the Bulldogs something here in the second stance. That's the look for Dort. Cheatham. Smart play, and the guy who's logged a lot of minutes. Had the three-point shot, pursued a better one. Driving pass, cutting lane finish. <laughs> Nick Weathers with a hot hand. No good looks yet. Dort walls him off, the crossover shakes him. The foul is on Dort, despite the emphatic rejection from Cheeto. Ben Howland's squad down by nine. When we come back, we'll tell you what 48 months and Ben Howland can do for a basketball program. What's a foul, what's not? Let's go inside the play. Lugans Dort gets called for a foul. He starts Jordan in legal guarding position, but on the crossover, he loses it, and that's where the foul comes. Yeah, at first glance, it looks like a play where Weatherspoon overpowers him, goes to the basket, and just loses momentum. No foul, but right there, he impedes the path of Weatherspoon, and albeit it looks like he's running away from the play toward the defender, he's actually impacting the play in the path of the offensive play. Foul called. And on the back side of that play, Zylan Cheatham's going to say, hey, clip that, because I got a really nice block at the end of that, too, even though it didn't count. <laughs> Off the inbounds, Lamar Peters, the junior from New Orleans, makes it 49-42. It's a very different game in the second half after, in the first, Arizona State led by as many as 18. Mike, five triplets here in six minutes in the second half for Mississippi State to give them life. Intensity, they've dialed it up a notch. They've met the intensity of Arizona State. We're in for a dog fight. Martin with a couple of crossovers, can't shake Carter, and he still drops it over him. Flares back at him as he back pedals down the floor. No hand, no hand, no hand. Here are the officials, no hands under the basket. They know it's high level between Cheatham and Holman. That's a fun matchup to watch. 6'10 for 6'8. <laughs> Lawrence cleared everything. Dort somehow gets it in his hands. Reverse layup. No. Three on one break. It's Carter with two. So you've seen a domino effect here. Arizona State defensively had been getting stops. Because they got those stops, they were able to get out and run in transition, build a lead. Mississippi State's converting. That's taking away the transition from Arizona State. That's what's lessening the gap here. What's happened different defensively where Arizona State hasn't been able to get those stops? Mississippi State's starting to pound it inside. And also on that pound inside, it's been a kick out. The three-point shot has come alive. 5-3, something they couldn't do in that first half. 
they've discovered here in the second. Another look from three. Out of bounds. And it looked like it was going to stay here. Both benches a little surprised. Coming up Wednesday, a couple of games that are going to be fun. See what the reception is as LeBron makes return part two. Back to Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland. The Lakers and Cavs, 8 Eastern. And then KD and the Warriors play host to Paul George and the Thunder at Oracle. Steph out the last six games. A very different looking Warriors squad without him. Reunion night. That feels like revenge night. <laughs> LeBron versus the Cavs. The Thunder have reasons not to be fans of the Warriors. <coughs> Kevin Durant. It's revenge night. Get reunion. The Kumbaya ain't playing for me over the holidays here. NBA countdown, 7 Eastern on ESPN. And on the ESPN app, you can take it with you wherever you go. Offensive foul on Dort. Lamar Peters tumbles to the ground. It's number three on the freshman guard from Montreal. Ben Howland's got his team right back in it. No stranger to high-level hoops. Ben Howland, successful wherever he's been. Northern Arizona went to the NCAA first round of the tournament. At Pittsburgh in his fourth year to the Sweet 16. And went to two Sweet 16s there and at UCLA for 10 years, went to three Final Fours, seven NCAA tournaments, all of those coming in his fourth season. Now year number four in Starkville, he's gone from 14 to 16 to 25 wins and the NIT last year, and they're hoping in Starkville that this is the first time they get back to the NCAA tournament since 2009. What an impressive post entry from Weatherspoon to thread the needle down low to Holman for the finish. Ball tipped away from Dort, stays here. You won't see a tighter window than this one from Weatherspoon. On the freeze here, take a look. Good luck getting it in there with defense and defense. How about that? Electing to use the bounce pass as opposed to the chest pass is what allows him to get that one off. Dort strike helps shake Quindary Weatherspoon out of the way. That'll be a big virtue for him, but as we saw it with the offensive foul, a couple trips will go down the floor, could also work against him. As physical as he is, he has one gear. Like a bull in a china shop attacking the rim. He needs to learn that that defense is going to figure it out. Wait for him, and it's going to be a lot of charges coming his way. Change gears, finish at the rim, avoid violation. Here comes Woodard with strength. Oh, -ho! the throw down with the right. Perfect example of the lack of identifying when to change gears for Thor. How about a jump stop? A little mid-range finish. Not forcing it into the teeth of that long defense. And then on the other side, trickle down effect. Easy two. As gifted a star as he is right here. Stop on a dime. Don't come into that defense. Ado is 6'10". Pull up, hit it. It makes a less difficult offering. And then on the other end, that's a leak out for two. Four point swing because Dork can't identify changing gears. Although he might be a one year player at Arizona State, there's certainly development for him as well. Oh, look, a jump stop. That's good gear. Tough defense down low. Oh. He didn't convert Bulldogs fans offensively on that end, but reason for optimism, defensively, you've toughened up. You're protecting your rim. You're not giving up anything easy at ground zero. Midway through the second half, winner goes on to face Utah State in the championship game. On Wednesday night, 11 Eastern, you're on ESPNU. Mike Cousins, former Notre Dame forward. Jordan Cornett with you here from T-Mobile Arena. Arizona State has led by as many as 18. Mississippi State with a bucket here would make it a one-possession game. Well, this one got away with the travel. 
From the corner, three-pointer, no. Offensive board. Perry. Adu, through two defenders, will shoot free throws. And Arizona State clinging to a lead, but momentum has shifted. Mississippi State is playing tougher in the trenches at this point. Not only are they defensive rebounding and defending, protecting their rim, they're generating second chance opportunities on the offensive side of things. That foul got everybody off the bench for the Bulldogs. You saw that earlier. That's been trending throughout this night. It's been a theme. Utah State's energy off the bench translated to productivity and high-level performance on the floor for the Aggies in the first game win. You're starting to see that as the tide is turned here with Mississippi State. Adu does what he needs to, 53-51. Martin had the left side clear most of that possession. Weatherspoon palms to the skies. He gets called for the foul. His fourth. You know, there's a lot to like about this backcourt. Dort, 6'4", big, strong guard, physical. Remy Martin is the perfect Robin to that Batman in Dort. Speedy, quick, unrelenting motor. Really puts the pressure on that defense in a lot of ways. He is the straw that stirs the drink because he controls pace for these guys. Three-point lead for the Sun Devils. Great early season bracket. Auburn, Duke. That is a game you don't want to miss. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Duke demolishing San Diego State. And Auburn with a takedown of Xavier. Gonzaga, preseason West Coast Conference favorites against Illinois. We'll see them a week from tomorrow as they will visit what was known in your days as the Jack, the South Pavilions, right, in South Bend to take on Notre Dame. Traveling to call on Lawrence. And again, protecting the goal. Martin on the drive. Meets three defenders who walled off that paint. A pack line defense of sorts. Had to kick it out. Dort back onto the floor. Trying to protect the lead for Arizona State. The last time that Mississippi State was out in front was with 7 minutes 39 seconds remaining in the first half when the score was 17-16. With an uphill climb most of the night for the number 15 team in the country. Mississippi State climbing back. Holman, he's a next level talent as a senior, hitting that three piece. And then Nick Weatherspoon, he's been doing it defensively. But as you see here, there's a theme. It's the three point shot has come alive to give Mississippi State balance, allowing them to get some easy twos as well. Too much dribbling. Dort into contact, gets it to go. He's going to challenge that defense, isn't he? He's going at your chest. If I'm the defense again, I'm just waiting. Plant those two feet, let him come to me and take a charge. It's there every time. Illegal screen. They get Woodard. Peter's disappointed. He was going to the corner, says, hey, I was going to be open for three. <laughs> Coming down to the final round. Head to the corner. Get wiped down, ready to go for the final 7.53.
The difference has been stark in the second half. It was 39-24 Arizona State by 15 at halftime. And the script has been flipped here by the Bulldogs in the last 12 minutes. A lot of it's had to do with rebounding. Minus 15 in the first half for the Bulldogs. Plus six on the backboard here in the second half. So really working. Dort is stripped. Weatherspoon takes a beat from behind and is swatted by Cheatham. Here comes Martin on the break. He wants it. He's got it. 57 becomes 59-53. Jordan got caught out of position and Holman throws it down on his head. Attribute that to the speed of Lamar Peters. Back to back possessions. Martin calls his own number. Taken away, Reggie Perry. Weatherspoon, straight up, white the steal. Couple of quick shots on the last two possessions for Arizona State. As Dort goes off the ball. Lake, 16 feet, pure. Very mature play for a senior. Had the three-point look, two dribbles, increased his chances, knocks down the mid-range. He's been such a great shooter over the course of his career. 72% coming into this tournament. Peters gets back iron. And the muscular parry the board. Arizona State can't be tentative. Yep. That's the look that's been working all game long. That early offense. First few seconds of the shot clock have been good to him. Can't stop now. Zylan Cheatham wears 45. And you'll see him right here. And watch the impact he's going to have on this play. I said he wears 45. He returned like MJ coming back from baseball who wore 45 and blocks that shot. What effort on that end. And coming back on the offensive side, it fuels the offense. Remy Martin, we talked about his pace, understanding when to strike. Defense won't commit to him. He'll make you pay. A little bit of Rosetta Stone, we call that. Defense translating into some offense. He takes such pride in being able to blow by off the dribble. It's interesting, he kind of crab walks down the court sometimes, looking sideways the way he approaches the offense. Bottom of this bracket, you got Florida State UAB 9 Eastern on either ESPN2 or ESPNU, the Advocare Invitational. And LSU put together a very nice recruiting class this year. Under Will Wade, they'll take on Charleston, Memphis, Oklahoma State, and Villanova, Canisius. As Villanova, as a lot of teams are at this time of year, just a handful of games in, trying to establish an identity. Florida State, that's a team to key in on. Get them on your radar. Embarrass Florida early in the season. A lot returning there. Coach Hamilton can coach. That's a dangerous team. Very tough, very long, very athletic. Arizona State 61, Mississippi State 55. In the first half, the Sun Devils led by as many as 18 as the 15th ranked Bulldogs up two spots in the poll today. I've been hanging around all second half. Locking foul underneath. Weatherspoon happy to be back on the floor today after tweaking his ankle 
in the opening moments against Long Beach State and watch the rest of the game from the sideline. Yesterday in practice was a limited participant in the early portion, but then in the team run through, sat with his shoes off on the side just to let the ankle rest. Coach Allen's coached a lot of tough guys. He said he's never seen one who competes quite like Nick Weatherspoon. High praise coming from a coach who's seen a lot of basketball. Dr. Dre returns to the game. Oop. I'm sorry, Robert Woodard. <laughs> Seventeen to shoot as it stays here. Ruby Martin bailed out right there, left his feet, didn't know where he's going to go with the basketball. Luckily, a deflection. Another go of it for Arizona State. Martin has the ball in his hands a lot for the Sun Devils. Play with some great teammates in high school: Marvin Bagley the third, Cody Riley at UCLA, and now here a top 25 caliber team as well. Look at what Arizona State's been able to do here. Imagine if Rob Edwards was able to travel with this team. Did not travel due to a, a back issue for what he would provide in scoring for this team. 16.5 points per game a year ago. They could have used his offense to really do it. Edwards, their third leading scorer, now out for his third and what will be on Wednesday, his fourth straight games with a back injury for the transfer from Cleveland State. I talked with Coach Hurley yesterday, he said, look, Dwarf is great, Lawrence is great, Cheatham, love our guys, but Edwards probably would have been the focus of our offense. And he will be when he returns. Just won't see it here in Vegas. This could be a big win for Arizona State, which prior to Bobby Hurley's tenure, Arizona State had just six out-of-conference wins against top 25 teams in their Pac-12 tenure, which goes back to 1978. Since he's come on board, now in his fourth season, they've already had three. A couple last year at Kansas, number two at the time, against Xavier here in Las Vegas, and in 2015 against then 18th ranked Texas A&M and looking to add a fourth non-conference top 25 win against number 15 Mississippi State. Now just four minutes away from making that reality. Tip for Quindary Weatherspoon, preseason first team all SEC pick. An interesting SEC first team with eight players on it. It's pretty nice. Again, here comes the drive. Got to identify you don't have it there, Dorn. Got to kick it back out and run offense. Love the driving. Got to fork for your team. Peters nearly lost it. Holman's underneath. That's easy off the window. You had a chance to build your lead, demoralize the opposition. Bad shot, puck it on the other end. Bulldogs have life. Lawrence fades and scores. Makes it a two possession game again. Peters wasn't quite ready, backs it out. Holman from deep, yes! 65-63, timeout with 2.41 to go. We got this one going back. Mississippi State within striking distance if they want to make it work. The brothers are going to have to figure it out. Quindary and Nick. Brothers Weatherspoon. The end exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. It's the MGM Resorts main event, part of ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. A game that was almost out of hand in the first half has been played within about one possession, coming down to the final round here, 2.41 remaining. T-Mobile Arena, 
My Cousins, Jordan Cornette, 65-63, Arizona State. They had a long layoff, again canceled on Friday against San Francisco, clamoring to get back out on the floor and hoping to hold on to a two-point lead. Their leading scorer, Lugans Dort, not a great shooting night tonight. Just six for 17, number zero, top of your screen in the corner. Martin off one foot, not a good look. Not your best look, and I was just about to say preemptively, I like the ball in Remy Martin's hands because of his decision-making ability over the way. Holman backing in. Now sends it out, just seven to shoot for the Speedy Peters. Nothing. He drives with the left. Ball out of bounds. Stays Mississippi State basketball. Set it at the top, and it's never more critical than right now. This backboard is going to be the difference. Who can grab the rebounds? Who can win the 50-50s? A lot of athletes on the floor. A lot of length. A lot of high-level physicality. Who wants it more? Go take a look at this. Inside of two minutes, the ability to go to the monitor and see off of whom did the ball bounce out of bounds to determine possession. So it clearly goes off the need as Peters. Yeah, it's, yeah Dort, it's all Dort. Dort touches it there. Always important on those plays to watch the rotation of the ball if it changes. But that was a pretty easy one, touching Dort not once but twice. But I love the officials doing their due diligence. This is going to come down to a final possession, so you want to get everything right inside that two-minute window. It's been quite some time since Mississippi State has closed a deficit as big as they face tonight and got a win. Dort coming in, almost out of control. Peters gets called for the foul. And he's bailed out from the foul, Dort, in the open floor. He only has four turnovers, and it's been because of plays exactly like this one, the kick out. Okay, your eyes get big, you see something at the rim, but you've got three defenders waiting for you in the paint. Retreat dribble, run offense. Love being in attack mode. But you gotta think the game. Lugans Dort is the bus in the movie Speed. <laughs> he just can't go under, what is it, 55 miles an hour, whatever it was. Great reference, great movie. <laughs> Quindary Weatherspoon, a little bit slow to get back up the floor. Goes to sit for at least this possession. Trainer came over to talk to him, said, I'm good. 5 of 17, 12 points. Hasn't had his best even. Lawrence is short. Mississippi State can take the lead for the first time since the seven and a half minute mark of the first half. I go ISO to hold it. He's your pro. He draws multiple defenders, nearly lost it. Peters with a kick. Weatherspoon, that's a long two. Tie game at 65 with 60 seconds to play. Let Remy Martin make your decision here. Dortz. Been out of control with the basketball. I'd like to see a high ball screen, let him carve up this defense. Ten seconds to shoot. Martin on the drive, the kick, a Lawrence three. He got it! 68-65. Holman, a response. Dort soars in for the rebound. Got a foul. They let a couple seconds go by there. Valuable kicks off the clock. Talk about the decision-making Remy Martin. Gets it in the teeth of the defense in the paint. Kicks out to 
Kamani, I mean, Kamani Lawrence. What a big time shot for the sophomore who's had himself an evening. Played just under 10 minutes a game last year. One of those guys has been challenged to elevate his role and be a factor. Comes in tonight averaging 15 points per game and hits the biggest shot of the night. And the sophomore Martin. Now with the offensive threat, Quindary Weatherspoon back on the floor can make it a two possession game. You know, Mississippi State got the shot they wanted. Holman wide open from three with a chance for the clap back. Couldn't get it to go, but you'll live with that. That's your star senior. He's a pro, just couldn't convert. Martin gets the bowl. No timeouts for the Bulldogs. They need a score, and they need to do it fast. That foul three-point shooter. Peters is the fastest player they've got. Blocking foul. Tough call there, Ooh. at least. Lawrence in disbelief. Uh, he hit that three. At this point last year, Lawrence wasn't even on the floor for the Sun Devils, out with a foot injury. Shows how much he's grown. Dort here. Did you see anything? I thought he was established. He was outside the arc. If anything, it felt like a charge. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Or a no call. But most well, definitely a charge. One more look just to be certain. It was, it might have been that final move where he fled into him, but I like the charge. That was a charge to me. I thought he established legal guarding position. Nobody ever pointed to the restricted area on the floor to say that his feet were there. But there was just a little jolt from Lawrence right before the contact that may have tripped off the official. So I see what could have triggered it. 11 seconds, three-point game. No timeout, so it's got to be either a turnover or an immediate foul. Try and pursue that turnover the first second or two. In oh, for Dort. No. That's the last thing you... Oh, man. And that seals it. Wow. How you can't get a body on somebody with a basketball to foul. Inexplicable. A valiant comeback effort from Mississippi State. Arizona State hangs on and has Bobby Hurley's fourth out of conference top 25 win. Here it is, inexplicable to me. You got a foul, okay, you lose your footing there. Some, a dude's gotta come up, commit to a foul there. You miss a foul, again, two guys had Pristine opportunities to foul. Tyson Carter, Abdul Ado, and they don't do it. You never know. You want to extend the game as long as you possibly can. Big time win for Arizona State against a team with a number in front of them. They had the crowd behind them here in Las Vegas tonight, and they defeat number 15, Mississippi State, handing them their first loss of the season. They didn't go to their top option, Dort, at the end. Instead, it was Kamani Lawrence. The dribble drive from Remy Martin to kick out to Kamani Lawrence. He knows left. He's watching. Phil Mickelson's in the house. He's got to deliver. Indeed, he does. The super sophomore. And Phil, seen enough. Maybe that winning will trickle down for him bottom of the week when he faces Tiger. Uh, he's got to be back here Wednesday night for the championship <laughs> matchup against Utah State. That's 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific on ESPNU. For more on that, I'm going to look back at this exciting game. Stay with us. We're coming right back to put a ball on it for Vegas. The championship matchup is set Wednesday night, 11 Eastern on ESPNU here at the MGM Resort's main event. It'll be the Utah State Aggies and the Arizona State Sun Devils from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Arizona State led by as many as 18 against Mississippi State. The Bulldogs put the pressure on in the second half, but the dagger was this three from Kamani Lawrence. Yeah, Mike, and I just felt like the guards of Arizona State were going to do enough not to let them down. Yes, Lawrence hits the big-time shot, but Remy Martin with the presence of mind to dribble into that defense, make them commit, they kick out. And then here, all you got to do is foul to extend the game. You see Kondari lose his footing. But there's opportunities from Doe. There's opportunity from Tyson Carter. No foul, basket there, and then it's over. 
So what this sets up is a really intriguing championship game on Wednesday night with an Arizona State team that had faced a long layoff because they had a game canceled on Friday. They had just been ready to get back onto the floor and have game action. So Utah State got up and down the floor in a hurry as they picked up their win against St. Mary's. And that'll be a high paced, likely high scoring game Wednesday against Arizona State. Yeah, and you look at it, Namias Kita, Sam Merrill, those are two guys that do it inside, do it outside. Arizona State proved to be tough in the interior. That was the difference in winning. Can they do it against a skilled big at 6'11 and a sharpshooter like Merrill? Kato was an exciting player to watch. He had 24 points, nine rebounds, five blocks, and Merrill got 23 points. It was, as you said, a good inside-outside combination. That'll be tough to guard. Yeah, Mike, so as I look at this one, if Arizona State can establish getting out in transition, pursuing early offense, I don't know if Utah State can run with them like that. So it'll be interesting to see if they can make this a half-court grinded out game. Although Utah State likes to run, they don't have the bodies like Arizona State has. If it gets into a track meet, I like Arizona State. Can they stop Lugans Dort as well? He didn't have the greatest shooting night tonight. Six of 17. Still had 17 points, though. Yeah, I mean, it, again, it's going to go back to the trenches. It's going to go back to who's going to be the toughest inside in the paint. Who's going to win the backboard? Just like tonight, it came down to toughness. Two teams prevail tonight with toughness. Who will be the tougher of the two come Wednesday evening? Arizona State had the luck of lefty Phil Mickelson in the house to watch them win. They'll have to get him back Wednesday as well for that matchup against Utah State. So on behalf of our entire crew, my partner Jordan Cornett, I'm Mike Cousins saying thanks so much for being with us tonight. It was a blast. We'll talk to you Wednesday here from Las Vegas.